okay guys, let's have a look at homework. So yesterday, our lesson was all about context clues. Context clues um, are super helpful when we come up to um, our tests because we usually have quite a lot of questions like this in our tests. Basically, you will have a sentence with an underlined word and it will say, what is the meaning of this word? It's testing you to see if you can use the clues around that word to help you figure it out. Number one, uh, Jonathan was reluctant to ride his bike after he fell and broke his arm the last time he cycled. Lily, what's the meaning of reluctant here? Uh, I choose B, unwilling. Unwilling, good job. So the reason the answer here is unwilling and uh, the reason we could figure it out was because the clue is that uh, Jonathan broke his arm last time he rode a bike and I have never broken a bone but I know that it is extremely painful so after you do something very painful to your body you're going to be a bit reluctant a bit unwilling and a bit hesitant before you jump straight on the bike in case you hurt yourself again number two winter read it for me please number two the students were very fond of the gentle guide dog that visited the classroom Good job. Uh, what do you think the answer is there, please, Trixie? What do you think fond means? That, um, fond means um, have a liking for. Good girl. Well done, Trixie. Fond means have a liking for. So the students were uh, fond of or liked this guide dog. Some uh, clues that can let you know this is that they said he was a gentle guide dog. So we all know that guide dogs are special service dogs that are trained to be very gentle, very well behaved and very nice dogs. Number three, the twin girls were identical with the same height, hair color and eye color. Baokang, what's the answer for this one? What does identical mean? Uh, I think it's the exactly the same. Good job. Well done, Bao Kang. Some clues that we got here were the fact that they were twin girls. Also, it says they are the same height, they had the same hair color, and the same eye color. So identical means exactly the same with barely any differences. Okay, on to the next one, number four. Uh, Rosie, make sure your camera switched on. After attending extra sessions and spending more time studying, Derek's test scores began to improve. What do you think for this one, Lily? I think it is A, get better. Correct, well done. Improve means to get better. Some uh, clues we could use here is that Derek uh, attended extra sessions and he spent more time studying. So if he did that, we would like to think that your test score is going to get better if you're doing extra sessions and spending more time on your studies. Number five, after a long night of studying, uh, Lena stumbled out of bed sleepily and grumbled about her upcoming math test to her mom. Kimmy, what do you think grumbled means? I think A, B, complained and murmured. Good job. Complained and murmured. So if you murmur, you're not talking very loudly. You're saying something kind of under your breath or quietly. So after a long night of studying, uh, we know that she's tired. So she's probably going to be complaining. And Lena is sleepy. So she's very um, sleepy because she's tired from studying. And that lets us know that she's not going to be singing happily or talking nonstop. She is tired. She's going to be complaining and probably whispering under her breath. Number six, Jamie was impressed with the bargain he got on his new television after he found two coupons and paid less, less than half of the original price. Pat, what do you think about this one? Uh, I think it's surprisingly cheap price. Good job. Okay, Pat, can you tell me what the clues are to help you here? Uh, the clues is after he found two coupons and paid less than half of the price. Exactly. Lucky, lucky Jamie. So he found two coupons, or um, we could also call them vouchers, and he ended up paying 50% or less than 50% of the price of the TV. So he got a surprisingly cheap price, also known as a bargain. Okay, number seven. During spring, Lisa got a temporary job at the local flower shop when many people were buying gardening equipment to replant their gardens. Thailand B, what do you think? The answer is A. That's the for a short time. 
Good job. Well done, Thailandi. Some of the clues that we could have got here were during spring. So it doesn't say forever, but it says during spring, she got a temporary job when many people were buying gardening equipment to replant their gardens. So we know that temporary is just lasting for a short time. So if something is temporary, it doesn't last forever. It's the opposite of permanent. Number eight, uh, Han, can you read the sentence for me? Her favorite leisure. Her favorite leisure. Leisure activity or painting, reading, and writing her bike. I think that. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to you either. Go ahead, Han. I think that's free free time. Good girl, well done. Leisure time is your free time. So time outside of school, outside of homework, outside of any responsibilities that you have. So her favorite free time activities are painting, reading, and riding her bike. Um, the clues in this were the activities that she's doing. You paint, read, and ride your bike when you have spare time or free time. Okay, good job with this one. Uh, on to the next two pages. Um, so I'm going to call your name and what I'd like you to do is just read out the sentence with the correct word. Uh, Steve, number one. Um, mini, mini, M miniature. Miniature pony is a very small horse. Correct. Well done. Number two. Uh, let's go for Billet. Number two is when I get out of the pool water. My body shivers. Good job. Number three, Cherry, read it for me. Um, I was annoyed when my sister used my hairbrush. Good girl. Well done, Cherry. Katie, number four, please. Number four is uh, extinct. Full sentence. Dinosaurs are called extinct because they are not living. Good job. Well done, Katie. Number five. Can you do that one for me, please, Hacker? When a brother stopped hammering, the noise ceased. Ceased. Good job. So ceased means ended. Very good, Hacker. And then you guys had to write a sentence using any of these words that you wrote above. Here is my sentence. Miniature cows are adorable. Click the raise your hand button if you've ever seen a miniature cow. Okay, good. I thought no one was going to raise their hand. Rosie, Lily, and Ville. They are very, very cute. And if you want to know after this lesson, you should type in miniature cows on Google because they are so cute. Okay, next. Um, Rosie, number one. Oops. Number one, please, Rosie. I'll read the answer or the question. Both. So you can say, if a bear occupies a cave, it lives there all winter, and then give me the answer. If a bear occupies in a cave, Occupies. It occupies in a cave. It leaves there all winter. Uh, I think it is a. Good. Good job. If you occupy something, you live there. Good job. Number two, Ben. If I get a pet, I am responsible for taking care of it. That's how it be. Trust to do a job. Good job. Well done, Ben. Number three, uh, let's go for do, 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 Lucy. Yes, uh, number three is um, I was unhappiness. So can you read the full sentence? I was in misery when I fell and broke my leg. I was in misery when I fell and broke my leg. And what do you think misery means? Happiness or unhappiness? Unhappiness. Good job. Well done. Number four. Can you read that one for me? Noob. Number four. Well, well I looked down. I observed, observed a worm in the grass. Uh, I choose a saw. Good job, Noob. Well done. Observed means saw. Okay. Um, number five. Can you please do that one for me? Thailand A. What does it mean? Go near or stay away from? Stay away from. Good. Stay away from. Avoid means to stay away from something. Then you guys had to pick a word and write a sentence with it. Here is my sentence. I must be responsible for doing homework on time. All right, guys. Really good jobs on your homework. Now, our lesson today is split into two things. The first half is about the prefix non, and the second half is all about cause and effect. So, who can tell me what does the prefix non mean? In fact, firstly, I have a different question. 
What is a prefix? A prefix is a group of letters added at the beginning of a word to change the meaning. A suffix is a group of letters added to the end of a word to change the meaning. Now, now that we know what a prefix is, can anyone help me with the prefix non? Does anyone remember what the prefix non means? Winter, what do you think? I think non is to not. Yeah, perfect. Well done. The prefix non means not. Well done. Have a look. Non means not. Here we have aerosol. Here we have non-aerosol. An aerosol is a liquid in a can that is pressurized. So when you push down, it comes out like this. So it's pressurized like a gas. Non-aerosol is just a normal liquid in a bottle. Living, trees and dogs. Non-living, a kite, something that is not living. Okay, have a look at these words. Uh, can everyone read these words after me? I'll say them and then I want you to repeat after me. Nonsense. 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 Nonfiction. Non fiction. Non fiction. Non believer. Non believer. Non toxic. Non toxic. Non dairy. Non dairy. Awesome. Okay, guys, so when we have a word with a prefix, <clears throat> sometimes we look at the word and if we're not sure of the word we break it down into two so here I have the word nonsense I can see my prefix non and I can see my root word sense sense means uh, something that you have that makes you uh, clever so if you are sensible you are able to use your senses you're able to use your brain and use the senses to make good decisions so nonsense means you have no sense. You are not sensible and cannot make good decisions. So let's have a look at my sentence. Before my little brother could speak, he would just say nonsense. He would say things that did not make sense. Now, can you guys help me come up with another sentence using the word nonsense? Great, Pat, go ahead. When people have a stroke, all they say is nonsense. Oh, very good, Pat. That's really good. So guys, a stroke is something that happens. It's, um, it's a bleed in your brain and it's really, really serious. It's really dangerous. If someone is having a stroke, um, often the left side of their face starts to droop and they can't feel it and they start to say things that don't make any sense. They talk nonsense. Well done, Pat. Okay, the next word is non-fat. If something is non-fat, it has no fat inside it. Have a look at my sentence. People who need to lose some weight usually drink non-fat milk. So you can buy three different kinds of milk. You can buy milk with sugar, you can buy pasteurized milk, and you can buy skimmed milk. So it's had the fat taken out of it. Give me a sentence with the word non-fat. Billet. Uh, a sentence for the word non-fat is that when my mom is on a diet, uh, she usually buy non-fat yogurt. Good job. Very good. Really good sentence, Billy. Well done. Okay, so moving on from the prefix non and moving on to cause and effect. Please read this page for me. Cause and effect. One event in a story makes another happen. The first event is the cause. The event that happened as a result is the effect. Noticing causes and effects will help you see why things happen in a story. Good girl, thanks for reading. So guys, we're no stranger to cause and effect. We have learned about cause and effect many, many times before. The cause is the reason why something happens. And what happens because of that cause is the effect. When finding causes and effects, you can look for signal words such as because, so, as a result of, 
and therefore. So you can look out for these signal words to uh, help you find out or figure out when the author is trying to show you a cause and effect. Have a look at this picture. Can someone please give me a cause and effect sentence using these picture prompts? Cause and effect sentence. So a sentence that tells one cause and one effect. Pro, can you give me a cause and effect sentence? What's happening here? Uh, uh, there is no um, so so uh, so he could create a snowman. Good. It is snowing, so he creates a snowman. Because it's snowing, the effect of this is that a person can create a snowman. Good job. Have a look here, guys. Can you come up with some cause and effect scenarios? Have a look at mine. Winter, read the first one. I broke my finger, so I had to go to a hospital. What is the effect of this sentence, Winter? The effect, the effect is so... The effect is I have to go to hospital. Good job. The effect is having to go to hospital. Next, read this for me, please. Uh, Han, number two. My sister? My sister got a... Yes, my sister got a new job as a result of this, my, of this, my new shoes are ruined. Okay, so my sister got a new dog and as a result of this, my new shoes are ruined. The cause is that the sister got a new dog and clearly it has eaten the shoes. Next, uh, can you read that for me, please? Um, Thailand B. Okay, Pat, go ahead and read for me, please. There was a huge storm last night, therefore my tent blew away. Amazing. Pat, can you tell me what the effect is in that sentence, please? The effect is my tent blew away. Amazing. Good job. Uh, the effect is the tent blew away and the cause is that there was a huge storm. Okay, who will read the next sentence for me, please? Okay, Kimmy, go ahead. I missed the school bus, therefore I must make the school. Good girl. Well done. Okay, Lily, can you tell me what the cause is in this sentence? The cause is I missed the school bus. Amazing. Lovely work. Okay, guys, so I'm going to take us over and we're going to, well, we should have had more time to play this game. Bamboo. However, however, uh, I've had to take some time out to discuss about students not paying attention, but let's try our best. So uh, I'll be choosing those of you who want to play. So if you want to play, click the raise your hand button. Okay, Bile, go ahead and choose a dog. Tell me what the dog is doing. Uh, I choose the fourth dog that is playing soccer. Okay, good, but try to not use a number. Try to just use descriptive words, okay? All right, Bile, have a look. This is your question. It began to rain, so Sally and Joe, rain, <laughs> ran inside. So someone's made a mistake here, ran inside. What is the cause? Uh, it began to rain. Good job, well done. It began to rain and so therefore they ran inside. Good job, Bile, 15 points for your team. All right, girls, Lily, pick a dog, please. Uh, I would like the, uh, like the white dog which is wagging its tail. The white dog, he's wagging its tail. This one down here, great. Okay, Lily, <gasps> win five points. Good job, well done. Okay guys, for homework tonight, have a look. You have um, two pages of causes and effects. All right guys, that's about all we have time for today. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow and good luck with your test. Bye-bye.